Welcome to Picture Healer channel. My name is Shi Tian, and I'm going to continue last week's question and answer about feng shui and Chinese fortune telling. The first question, when is the best time to change your feng shui items from period A to period 9? You probably know that 2023 is the last year of period 8. And in 2024, we are starting a new feng shui period that will last for 20 years. And the starting of feng shui period 9 is technically February 4th because that's the Li Chun day or the start of spring according to the 24 solar turns or the 24 jie qi. So you can set up your new feng shui cures around that time. But in theory, the energy start to change as early as December 22nd, 2023. That's the Dongzhi or the winter solstice according to the 24 solar turns. So after December 22nd, you can start to change your feng shui items, feng shui cures or enhancers. So between the Dongzhi, December 22nd, until February 4th, 2024 will be the best time to set up your feng shui for period 9. And if you want to be extra careful, you can check the feng shui calendar for the best day to set up feng shui items. So that leads us to question number 2. How to select a lucky day to set up your feng shui items? For this, you have to check a feng shui calendar. If you can read Chinese, you can find a lot of Chinese feng shui calendar around the new year time, and it will show the daily lucky and unlucky activities. And I also have my own feng shui calendar and planner. I will have the link in the description box if you are interested. So one basic way is to look at the lucky activities of each date. So just pick up the date that says lucky to set up feng shui enhancers. And the second part is to look at your animal sign. You don't want to be conflicted that day. Each day has a governing animal sign. And the opposite to that animal sign in the chart is a conflicting animal sign. So if your animal sign is conflicted that day, it's better to pick a different day. And the third consideration is the direction. Because each animal sign is related to a certain direction. For example, the horse is always related to the south. So if your house is facing south, you can try to avoid the day when the south is conflicted that day. So that's the three basic things we can look at. The lucky activities of each day, check the conflicting animal sign and the conflicting direction. The next question is also about date selection. It is hard to follow exactly the calendar and do everything with the perfect timing and perfect direction. And I understand that. And I believe the date selection and the feng shui are the same. If it gives you more stress and confusion, it's better not to use it. I will refer to the calendar and uh, use the date selection only for important events that you can plan, such as a wedding or the best day to travel or start a business. If you cannot choose or you cannot change anything, then it's probably better not to check at all. These are just tools to enhance our life and we try to time the luck. So just pick and choose what works for you and ignore the rest. The next question is actually a comment about five elements. There's no good or bad element or lucky or unlucky element. One is not better than the other. And that's totally true. There are certain relationships within the five elements, and that can change the dynamics and change the energy. But it doesn't mean a certain element is worse than the other. And it's the same with the nine flying stars. 
Every star has positive and negative. Even when we consider the worst star, such as star five yellow and uh, two black, when they are tiny, they are still very lucky. After period nine, you will be period one again, and then period two. When we are in period two, the number two will become very lucky. So even though we say number two is an illness star, during period two, it's not going to be a problem. And you will show the positive side of this star, which is usually related to abundance, financial luck, and the luck related to properties, because this is an Earth star. So everything is relative. It depends on the relationship with different stars, different combination, and uh, depends on the timing. The third question, I have a comment about life gua. And one thing that confused people a lot is the beginning of the year. In Chinese feng shui and the fortune telling, we use li chun or the start of spring. And it's almost always on February 4th or 5th, sometimes the 3rd. So that's the same with the life gua number and also the 12 animal signs for the purpose of fortune telling. So for example, the birthday of January 25th, 1984, that's before February 4th, so it belongs to the previous year. So when you are looking at the life gua chart or the life gua number, you have to look at 1983. So 1983, it's a year of peak, and for male, it's the geng gua, that's number eight, and for female, it's the dui gua, number seven. If the birthday is after the li chun, after February 4th, 1984, then for male, it will be dui gua, number seven, and female will be geng gua, number eight. So for Chinese feng shui and fortune telling, we go with the 24 jie qi or 24 solar turns. And the beginning of the year is now the January 1st. We will look at the February 4th, the li chun or the start of spring. The last question is about the yearly yi jing forecast. For this year, 2023, I use yi jing hexagram number 37 family. How do you decide which hexagram to use for every year? And the simple answer is that we don't really know. We are just trying to guess the best we can. There are two books we refer to. One is called the Huang Ji Jing Shi, and the other one is the Tui Bei Tu, the back pushing book. Both are fortune telling books from ancient times, and they show the Yi Jing hexagram and the points to interpret the hexagram. And people believe it's in chronological order. So what will happen in the future will be the last few hexagrams in the book. Another way is to look at the heavenly stem and earthly branch of each year. This year is the year of rabbit. It's the Kui Mao year. And there's a related Yi Jing hexagram to the Kui Mao. So you can also look at it that way. All the books are like riddles. So nobody really knows until history happens. And we look back and everything makes sense. I hope that answers some of your question. I appreciate your comments and I will try to answer more in the future. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video.